Hey everyone, I'm Goose and this is my channel where I talk about Savage Worlds. Today I wanted to share my favorite new features in Pathfinder for Savage Worlds, the adaptation of the popular Pathfinder RPG to the Savage Worlds system. Many of these features were also included and expanded upon in the new Fancy Companion, but since Pinnacle first introduced these new features in the Savage Pathfinder book, I thought I'd use those as a basis. So. Without further ado, let's get started. The first feature I want to discuss is the rules for magic item crafting. Crafting rules is something that I always found hard to figure out in other games I have played, including 5e. The rules in Savage Pathfinder are clear on what is required to do it. You need money, the item you're enchanting, a workshop to make it in, time to make it, the appropriate power, and most importantly, the Artificer Edge. So not everyone in your party can just make the items they want. These requirements add a lot of realism and balance to the game and give more customization options. I also like that while there are certain items listed in the book, such as Rings of Protection or Cloaks of Elvenkind, there are also generic enchantments that you can put on weapons and armor. For example, you can make a weapon a plus one or a plus two by spending extra money and time. And it's not just limited to permanent items. There are rules for crafting potions and consumable items that grant temporary effects. For example, you can make a potion of healing that uses the healing power, or you can make a potion of fire breathing that uses the burst power. My next favorite addition is the magic item availability section. I love this little section and table in the Savage Pathfinder book that helps determine what magic items are available for when your players shop in town. It considers the city's size, but otherwise it seems at the whim of the dice. For example, if the players are in a town, the GM rolls 1d6 minus 1 to see how many potions and scrolls there are, 1d4 plus 1 to see how many healing potions there are, and 1d6 minus 2 to see how many other magic items are available to them. The GM then consults and rolls on the corresponding tables to see what magic items are for sale. Let me show you an example of how this works. Let's say my players are in the town of Sandpoint and want to buy a magic item. Sandpoint is a small city. We'll use the city option on the table. I roll a d6 to see how many potions and scrolls there are and get a 4. Let's go with two potions and two scrolls. So I roll a d20 twice on both the potions and scrolls tables. I got a potion of minor environmental protection, a potion of minor empathy, a scroll of lower trait, and a scroll of deflection. The table also lists prices for these items. Next, I roll 1d6 to see how many healing potions are for sale. I roll a 4. For other items, I roll 1d6 minus 1 and get a total of 4. I will roll 4 times on the other item categories table. We get 2 armor and weapons, 1 rod or staff, and 1 wondrous item. Let's roll for those. For the armor and weapons, I roll 1d12 twice and get a shield with 3 enchantments and armor with 1 enchantment. For the rod and staff, I rolled a d8 and got a staff of abjuration, evocation, or necromancy. The wondrous item is one of GM's choosing, so I can select whatever I want. With all of these, I can choose to make the specifications or I can let the players make the choices. Whether deciding what the potion's trappings are or which enchantments are on the weapons and armor, the GM can decide what they want to do. Another feature that I love is the armor and weapon materials section. A great way to make your weapons unique without adding magic is to make them out of exciting and rare materials. The Pathfinder for Savage Worlds book gives a decent list of materials that you can craft your weapons and armor out of and the cost it incurs. For example, you can make your sword out of adamantine, a hard metal that gives the weapon armor piercing. Or you can make your armor out of red dragon hide, which will give you a plus four armor bonus against fire. There are some additional unique materials listed in the Fancy Companion that you can also include in your game. These materials add flavor and variety to your equipment and give you an edge in certain situations. The next feature I want to talk about is the downtime rules. Sometimes there are lulls in the story or a written in break for your characters where they are not doing much. Giving them something to do during that lull is helpful so that your players do not feel like they are wasting time. The Savage Pathfinder book has some great rules for downtime activities that your characters can engage in whenever they have a week of downtime or at the GM's discretion. These activities include making magic items, as we discussed earlier, training, which can improve your skills or edges, earning some extra money on the side by doing odd jobs or performing, researching that magic book they found, which can reveal secrets or new powers, networking in the town, which can increase your contacts or reputation, spending time with family, or just resting from the battle that left them wounded, which can speed up natural healing or remove fatigue. These activities are not mandatory, but can add depth and flavor to your character in the story. They can also have mechanical benefits, such as improving your stats, gaining new abilities, or earning more resources. This downtime rule is a great way to make downtime more meaningful and fun. The last feature I want to talk about is the epic powers. There are also new rules for epic power modifiers in the Savage Pathfinder book. These new rules and modifiers allow you to add more powerful effects to any of your powers that has one listed. For example, the elemental manipulation power lets you manipulate elements such as water, air, fire, earth, etc. This power is limited in its use, but you can also use the epic power modifier called weather, which allows you to use the power to 
Well, control the weather. You can create storms, fog, wind, rain, snow. This modifier costs four power points and requires a raise on the arcane skill roll. These epic powers allow users to use the base power, but also will enable the power to become way stronger later in the game when the caster takes the edge to grant them access to the epic modifiers. There are many other epic modifiers for additional powers, such as summoning multiple allies, creating permanent illusions, teleporting long distances. These modifiers add more options and versatility to your powers, making them more, well, epic. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more Savage Worlds content. Also, let me know in the comments what your favorite new features are in Pathfinder for Savage Worlds or in the Fantasy Companion. I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Thanks for watching. Until next time, stay savage.